At this time of year, we get a bit of a unique opportunity, having had a Christmas tree in the house, potentially absorbing energies of the household, we have the opportunity to take something that's absorbed what was us, has given its life into the family space, and then use it to make firewood. But as part of that firewood, we often end up discarding these branches, which are rich in resin, absolutely full of juicy sap, and will go up an absolute treat in the fire. That gives us the opportunity, therefore, to prepare now for Imolk, by, which is a festival of fire, obviously, um, by cutting back these branches, putting them somewhere to dry out a little bit further if they're not already crispy. These are quite crisp, but they're about they're another week's worth of drying. We'll do them some good. And then ahead of Imolk itself, we can prepare a bed of coals in our garden and cast some branches onto the fire. I'll show you a little bit of how this dances in the flame in a little while when I pop some on the stove, on the wood burner stove at the end of this video. Now this tree actually isn't one of ours, it's one I spotted in a neighbour's garden that they don't want. We've got a potted tree that we will plant out in a local space in the near future. But I enjoy fire, I enjoy working with Imolk. I enjoy divinatory energies and works. Pines, firs, spruces, they all have very similar folklore, essentially. Very similar magical qualities. And they're all pine rich, and all burn in a similar way. They are a standing point, an evergreen point between past, present and future. A tree of balance. And we can use that balance as a baseline for now to tell us what we're going to do in the year ahead by watching how the fire dances through the resins here. Right, I'm going to trim it up and I'll show you some fire in a little bit. You're looking ideally for pieces about so big, um, so aim for 8 to 12 inch, or if you've got a bigger fire pit, fire bowl, something a little bit bigger, bigger rather, uh, but a bundle like that will give you a good bit of fine scrying for a few moments. There's several ways of scrying using fire. The best I find is simply watching the flames having declared it a sacred fire, having named it as such, or invoked a deity or spirit to do so, you'd cast on whatever it is you're choosing to burn, be that paper with words written on, be that branches of certain trees as we're going to do now. Oftentimes you'll find people looking for answers through what can you see in this photograph of a fire. And while they're often very entertaining, they're not necessarily the best oracular devices as a photograph is still, it allows our mind's eye, our subconscious, our, our pattern seeking mind to come forth and claim a shape, name a shape. Whereas when you're sat in semi trance in front of a sacred fire or a bed of embers, as I've uh, spread out here, your subconscious takes over that a little bit more and you become part of the flow of the fire. So as we pop this on, you'll notice I've spread out a bed of embers to avoid any major hot spots. I'm going to pop on a few pieces and if I were doing this properly I'd be in a scrying mode right now. I'd have taken time to breathe, get into semi-trance and I'd be watching just to see where it takes fire first, the shapes the fire makes and how it burns, having asked the question. I'm just going to let you watch the fire for a moment to see if you've got a question, maybe you can get an answer. A 
that's Waldron Town. We should have given you some time to get some questions going. It's still slightly damp, so it will be better when it's been dried for a week. But here we go. If when you're coming to scry your um, foliage, your fur is too dry and goes straight up, you can always dip it in water or spray with a fine mist of water. You can anoint it with a mixture of uh, a little bit of your own blood and some obviously responsible and ethically of course. Mix with some water sprayed on top to burn it more to you. This is still slightly damp and it is taking a while. But sometimes how it embers and how long it takes or the shape the smoke makes can be just as informative depending on the question you're asking. At this point, watching the shapes of the embers falling, where falls first, where stays up last, can give you some information. I hope you've enjoyed watching that little bit of fire. I hope it's inspired you to butcher your own Christmas tree, if you've still got it in the garden. And fingers crossed, you'll find some answers to some questions you've been wanting to ask.